Hi everybody, it's Whitney from All the Shelves. Today I am continuing my series about American literature. I've previously done a video on American literature from 1900 to 1909, then I did 1910 to 1919, and today I'm going to change things up a little bit because I love American literature in the 1920s. I think this is the period that really worked to define what American literature was going to become, not just because the influence of modernism and the influence of film, but also because you had these big, awesome, just really stunning American authors that were all working during this time period and very closely associated. So I'm going to talk about books from 1920 to 1925 today and then 1925 to 1929 in another video because there's just so many books from this period that I would like to talk to you about. So the first book that I want to talk about is Edith Wharton's Age of Innocence. Um, this is Edith Wharton's most famous novel. In the last video I talked about Summer, and I will link that video down below, and I do love Summer, but I think that in Age of Innocence she really starts to develop as a very complicated writer. Wharton published this serially in 1920 and then the novel was um, put together and released in 1921, but the book is set in New York during the Gilded Age, which is uh, it's right at the beginning of the Gilded Age, the 1870s. 70s. And she's thinking about the kind of conventions of society, how certain people can disrupt those conventions, and what the consequences of that disruption might be. So the book is about Newland Archer. He's engaged to a woman named May. They have a really nice life together. It seems like they're going to fit in really well into this society. And then suddenly May's cousin, Ellen Olinska, enters the scene, and Newland just completely falls for Ellen and is very taken with her like sense of rebellion. She's a divorced woman and so that seems very exciting to him and it obviously means that she has some kinds of experiences that May doesn't. What I really love about this book is the levels of perspective that you get. Um, for the most part we're with Newland but you always get hints that other people that surround him maybe know more than he gives them credit for. I'm especially interested in May. She is just such a tragic figure to me, completely stuck in this society um, and trying desperately to hang on despite what she knows or doesn't know. So if you haven't read Age of Innocence yet, let me really recommend it. It's very romantic. If you've seen the film with Winona Ryder, that is also very good and a good kind of example of how just like sweeping and romantic the book can be, but also just very sad, this underlying sense of being stuck and um, a feeling of tragedy over being stuck in that in that community. The next book I want to talk about is Sinclair Lewis's Babbitt. This is another book about the conventions of society and feeling like you really want to desperately escape those conventions, a theme that you see pop up quite often in the 1920s. As you could imagine, there's this flapper culture, the jazz age, uh, people are going to underground clubs and drinking the night away. There's this idea idea that the surface world that is being presented as normative and desirable isn't quite what the average American even wants to participate in. So Babbitt is the story of this salesman who gets really fed up with this world and it's very funny. Um, all of Sinclair Lewis stuff that I've read has been a kind of like takedown of Midwestern consumer type culture and the character in this Babbitt starts to um, really rebel against that consumer culture in very funny ways. So this is the book of just a regular dude um, who tries to keep up with the Joneses and whose journey to keep up with the Joneses is just not very satisfying to him. The next book was published in 1922 and it is The Beautiful and Damned by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I could talk about The Great Gatsby, spoiler alert, I'm not going to be talking about The Great Gatsby in either of my two videos. I would like to make a whole separate video for Gatsby just because it is uh, one of my very favorite books of all time. Like, I think it is a lot of people's, um, and I have, you know, a lot of thoughts on it. But I couldn't leave Fitzgerald off of a list of 1920s American literature, obviously because he was just, like, so ridiculously influential. The Beautiful and Damned is an excellent book, and I feel like it's a little underappreciated these days. It's about a couple who meet and fall in love and get married, and their adventures through 1920s New York society. So they're drinking, they're partying, um, they're extremely selfish, and they are obsessed with their wealth. Um, they just love to spend a ton of money for no good reason except for just like conspicuous consumption. Um, and because of that, you 
you watch them just like hurt each other over and over again. It's a really difficult book to read because of how um, dislikable the characters are and I know you know on book two we talk about all the time whether or not a dislikable character is something that's going to get us to put the book down or not and this one I think that you're not going to put the book down because these characters are unlikable their unlikability is fascinating and you want to see them fail because of their bad decisions but you also really don't want to see them hurt each other anymore because you grow to like them and see their vulnerabilities. The story is that it was very much based on his marriage to Zelda Fitzgerald and so that kind of underlying pathos really makes a lot of sense once you have that biographical information but the book works on its own without that too. So The Beautiful and Damned, it's long, um, it's much longer than Gatsby or any of his other works actually but it is very much worth the effort. The next book was published in 1925 and 1925 was a huge year in American publishing. I'm going to be talking about a lot of books over the next two videos that were published just in this one year. And the first one I want to talk about is Gentlemen Prefer Blondes But Marry Brunettes by Anita Luce. Um, you've maybe seen this movie and I feel like the book is very similar in tone to the movie. It's like a romp. <laughs> it's, it's very free and fun and um, fun and just like kind of absurd. It's told in diary entries and it's just about these women's travels. It's been a while since I've read this one I have to admit but even just opening it right here I laughed out loud at one of the sentences. So the two girls are traveling in London right now and she says I mean you really would think it was New York because I always think that the most delightful thing about traveling is to always be running into Americans and to always feel at home. If that's not like the perfect description of what it means to be an American abroad I don't know what is. In the 1920s and on, that is how I feel like Americans feel abroad. Um, this kind of like sense of comfort and home when you see another American or when you see a McDonald's and Piccadilly Circus or whatever, right? Um, and just so you know, Edith Wharton said that this was the great American novel, which I just love that she was interested in the kind of workings of society both on a comic level, and she does have some comic novels, and then on this romantic kind of sprawling Gilded Age type level commenting on 19. 20s life. I just think that this is a book that because it's old but also light-hearted not a lot of people get a chance to study and if you read it you would just have a really good time but also a really good snapshot on what kind of women were like in the 1920s. The change from the turn of the century Gibson girl type woman to the 1920s flapper girl free new type woman. It's a pretty fun look at that culture. The last book I want to talk about was also published in 1925 it is Manhattan Transfer by John Dos Passos. This is actually part of a trilogy called the USA Trilogy and it's really difficult to sum this one up because it takes a whole bunch of different people's stories and puts them in juxtaposition with each other to create a snapshot of New York City at a particular point in time. Um, it's one of those books that people very annoyingly I think say New York was almost a character in the book I, I guess. That doesn't really mean anything like New York it was the setting and it is a very like clearly depicted interesting setting. Uh, I think that's what people mean when they say it was a character. Maybe they also mean that the city itself is determining the actions of the people who populate it and that is very much the case in this book as well. The thing people really love to talk about with this book is how John Dos Passos was influenced by cinematic tropes. So there's the juxtapositions of short scenes together as though they were shots in a film being juxtaposed together and in that juxtaposition of two things that mean something separate you create this kind of third meaning. Um, he does that a lot. He also is very interested in images just speaking for themselves so he will just like suddenly put in an advertisement that a character sees on the side of the road or he will put in some kind of like news clipping and it's supposed to speak for itself in juxtaposition to the character stories. Um, so once again I'm not going to try to summarize this because it is just really difficult to do but it's about the immigrant experience um, and how immigrants are relating to their surroundings but it's also about the native New Yorkers experience and how they deal with immigrants coming into the country and rapidly changing the landscape in the 1920s. So once again that's Manhattan Transfer by John Dos Passos. I haven't read the other two in the trilogy. When I was
was in New York I just kept thinking about this book so I actually bought the two other books. So once I read those I'll get back to you and let you know about the entire trilogy and how it works all together. Those are five books that I think are very representative of the first half of the 1920s and are all really worth your time and attention. I really love all five of these books and I really think that it's interesting the focus on New York City in the 1920s as this hub of culture, um, of drinking culture and jazz culture and just like the exciting nightlife. Um, there aren't a whole lot of books that I can think of from that time period that deal with other parts of the country. Uh, Babbitt is one exception and, and everything by Sinclair Lewis that talk about the Midwest specifically, but for a lot of these authors they were very concerned with city life and New York City being like the epitome of cities, the Ur city of American culture. I hope you liked this video. Let me know if there's some things from the first half of the 1920s that I am missing and let me know if you've read any of these books and have any thoughts on them. I will see you in my next video where I talk about 1925 to 1929. Thanks for watching.